All right, email services in high level. This is probably one of the most complicated things that you're going to set up inside of high level. And whether you have tons of clients on your version of high level or you're the only one using it, it's worth getting this right. So today we're gonna to cover the four levels of setting up email for yourself and for clients. And I promise to do my absolute best to make this the last video you ever have to watch on setting up email services in high level. So let's start with number one, which is the lead connector default email system. So you may have noticed this one if you sign up with high level and you try to send an email it sends with this weird thing that says via mg.msgsndr.com that's short for message sender and the mg stands for mailgun so this is high level's own mailgun account and they use that message sender domain to send email on behalf of anyone that just randomly signs up for a high level account and needs to send emails right away now there are a lot of drawbacks to this number one you're probably going to get marked as spam or phishing or get alerts in gmail that say this message looks suspicious Suspicious. That's almost certainly going to happen because of two main reasons. The domain it's sending from doesn't match. That's number one. But number two, and arguably more important, is that the sender reputation of msgsndr.com is not great because literally anybody that's ever signed up for a high level account has sent through this domain and they may or may not be following rules. You're basically sharing your email credit score, so to speak, with tens of thousands of strangers who may or may not have any idea what they're doing when it comes to sending emails. The benefit to this one is that it sends without having to do any other setup. But the obvious drawback is you're not going to get great deliverability. So in no case would I really recommend doing this long term. So that brings me to level two, which is using a software wide white labeled sending domain. So an example of this would be something like mail.yourwebsite.com. So my version of high level is called streamline. So mine would be mail.streamline.com. And basically what this one does is it's the same as the high level one, but instead of sharing the sender reputation with everybody that's ever signed up for a high level account, you'd only be sharing with everybody that's using your version of the software because they're the only ones that could access that sending domain. So the pros here are you're probably going to have better reputation. You're going to get better deliverability. However, the cons are if one person goes rogue and starts sending a million different emails all at one time, then that could screw up sending for everybody else using that domain. So this one works as a temporary solution, but it's not a great long term one. However, it is important to note that this is what most other email sending softwares like ConvertKit, MailChimp, etc. do. If you look at a message that's been sent to you from one of those softwares, it's going to say the name of the person via ConvertKit, via MailChimp. So this is the same thing that would be happening for your clients. They would be able to put their name and their email, and that's what would show up in the subject line. However, that via section will always be there. And if you're curious, like, is that going to affect whether or not I get a, hey, this email looks suspicious warning on the emails getting sent out? The answer is that it really just depends. If you have a good sender reputation and you've been following the rules for months or years, you'll probably be fine. If you're brand new and somebody's not following the rules, then it's likely that your reputation will go down over time and you'll get more of those and you'll have more emails land in spam. Now, before we go to levels three and four, we need to understand what DNS settings are. Basically, these are the rules that tell certain parts of your domain where to point and what to do. So in my case, let's say my domain is agencydominance.com. If I set up a subdomain, that would put something before the agency dominance part of that domain. So it could be mail.agencydominance.com. The place that you set that subdomain up is called the DNS settings. And as a reseller of high level, you're going to have your own DNS settings, but you're also going to have your client's DNS settings that you may have to deal with at some point. However, the thing with DNS settings is not a lot of people are super comfortable with them. Most small business owners don't even know how to access it. They won't know what it is if you ask them. And it's just kind of a nightmare to get access to. So level three is kind of a clever way to get around having to get access to your client's DNS records, which can definitely be a pain. And what it is, is that instead of having a software wide domain that everyone sends from, you just set up an individual subdomain for each client that comes on board, but it's inside your DNS setting, not their DNS settings. So in this example, again, going back to streamline the name of my software, the way that we would set it up would be client1.streamline.com, client2.streamline.com. And you set that up inside of your DNS settings so that if one person goes rogue, they're just ruining the reputation of that one subdomain, not everybody else's ability to send emails because they're all in the same subdomain. And then lastly, that brings me to number four, which is getting access to every single person's individual DNS settings, going in there and setting it up for them or having them set it up. Now, this by far is going to get you the best sender reputation, the best deliverability, the best everything for your clients. However, it is the most difficult to set up because you have to get access and either 
set it up for them or teach them how to set it up. The businesses I know that do this well either get on a 40 minute call to set this up and train the person on how to use it, or they get access to the credentials, the username and the password to their DNS settings. And then they set up a two factor authentication appointment where the software person is logging in on behalf of the client and the client has to be available to send the two factor authentication code to the software company to make sure they can log in and set up the DNS records on behalf of them. So this way the client doesn't actually have to get on the call. They just have to be there and send a quick message over to the company with that two factor authentication code, whichever way you choose, it's up to you. Just know that it will likely be a hurdle for 80 to 90% of people, unless you're in a very tech savvy niche to actually understand what DNS is, where their credentials are and how to get you those credentials. So my suggestion would be to go with level three, set everybody up with their own individual domain as soon as they sign up for the software. And then if, and only if they end up sending you the credentials for their DNS settings or signing up for a call, then you would move to level four where they have their own DNS settings set up on their own subdomain that nobody else can touch and that matches their regular domain. With that explanation out of the way, let's show you how to set each one of these up. All right, so first let's discuss level one. If we go to settings and then email services, you'll see that the default provider is a lead connector here. This is how level one is set up. You literally do nothing. If I go here to location settings, you'll see that the clients on here that I'm not really worried about email for just to test accounts or whatever are set up with lead connector as their provider and they do not have a domain attached, which means they're going to default to the MSGSNDR email. That's level one. All right. Now, if I want to do level two, which is a software wide sending domain, I would come here on the agency level, I would set up a dedicated domain for everyone in this account. And as you can see here, I've got a dedicated domain and I've got a notification section. So notification emails, meaning that they're sent to anyone that is an agency or sub account user is going to send from the domain I set up here. And this domain here will be for any emails that are going to people outside of the users of any individual sub account or the agency. So first let's set up the dedicated domain. So I'm going to click add domain. And here I want to put a domain that matches the name of my software. So in this case, it's streamline.io. A little trick that I like to do is just do whatever the first letter of the name of the domain is. So in this case, S, and then I put the name of the domain here and that's the dedicated domain. I just think it blends in a little bit better when it's the same letter. So you don't really realize that it's there. If you click on here, you'll see the via right there as well. Make sure you read up on this part, the email warming process where it says use the subdomain with lead connector. This is what we're doing here by adding a letter before the actual domain. That means we've set up a subdomain. So now I'm going to go ahead and click add and verify, and it's going to give me all of these random letters and numbers and things that I need to add to my DNS settings. I host my DNS in something called Cloudflare. So I'm going to go to Cloudflare and log in. All right. So you can see the accounts that I have on here. I'm going to go ahead and select streamline. Then I'm going to go to DNS. So the way this works is that all of these types handle different things. MX records are for email. C names are for subdomains. A is also for subdomains or just domains in general. I'm going to walk you through how to set this up. It's very simple. Everybody can do it. So you'll see here we have five records to add two TXT records, one C name and two MX records. So first of all, what we're going to do is copy this guy here, click add record. And this one is going to be a TXT record. So for our name, we're going to paste this in here. And then for the content, we're going to to copy this value to be entered and paste that. Now we're going to go ahead and click save and that one should be good. Next up, this TXT record. This is just s.streamline.io and this is the value that we're supposed to enter. So in this case, I'm going to click add record. I'm going to select TXT and then I'm going to just put S. This is the name. As you can see, it's popping up here. And as you can see, the name here actually took off the rest of the domain here and it just did the KRS dot underscore domain key.s. So in this case, we're just putting the S. If we were to put the full thing, you can see that it just defaults back to what we had there. So we don't need to put it. We just need to put the S and it's going to keep it the same. We paste that content in there and click save. Next up, we're going to do a C name. And in this case, it's email.s that we're going to put at the beginning. And then the values to be entered 
is mailgun.org. So let's go ahead and do it. Add record, cname, email.s, and the target is mailgun.org. And what we're going to do is turn off the proxy status here, only do the DNS. We'll leave the time to load to auto. That's really only important for this MX record here. And we'll go ahead and click save. Awesome. Next record is going to be an MX record. The name is S and the value is mxa.mailgun.org. So I'm just going to do S mxa the time to load will leave on auto and the priority we will put at 10 because that's what it says nice now we're going to do one more mx name required s and the server in this case is mxb.mailgun.org time to load we leave to auto and the priority we move to 10. Perfect. So now that we have all of those set up, we're going to click verify domain and it's telling us that none of them have been verified. Nothing has worked. So I'm just going to hit it again. And as you can see, it says that this TXT record is not set up correctly. So let's go check it. Everything looks fine in this case. It's probably just not recognizing it for some reason. So I'm going to click verify again. And as you can see, everything was verified. It's actually still giving us the domain not verified section here. So I'm going to click verify again. And there you go. So now you can see that this dedicated domain is set up with a shared IP on this. So subdomain, meaning if we go back here, you can see that the default provider for anybody sending email is s.streamline.io. So any emails they send are going to say their name and email via s.streamline.io. Very cool. Now, if we go to these location settings here, if I were to go into any of these individual ones, like let's check this one, you, you can see that we're on lead connector email. However, the domain here is just the default. So I would need to select this one in order to have the email send through that. However, if I were to create a new account, it would default to this. And once you've created this one, the process for creating the notification section is going to be exactly the same. You'll click on add domain. You'll decide what it is. So this could be like notifs.streamline.io. Click add and verify. And it's going to give you the exact same thing to do inside of your DNS settings. And once you've finished that up, it should look like this. All right, now let's move on to level three, which is creating a custom subdomain inside of your DNS settings on behalf of a client. So here I am inside of a dummy client sub account, Concrete Lifting Inc. And I'm going to go to settings, email services. And as you can see, it's on the default provider here. So instead, I'm going to switch it to a dedicated domain. I'll click add domain. And this is where you would either set it up on their DNS or your DNS. In this case, we're setting up inside of our DNS. So we could do something like concrete lifting ink dot streamline dot io it's a little bit long so instead i might do cli or i could do like concrete mail dot streamline dot io i'll just stick with this one it doesn't really matter at the end of the day any of these will work about the same so i'll click add and verify and again it's just going to give me these dns records to add inside of my dns settings and it's the exact same as what we set up before so now all of those are added and verified it still gives me this error message which is kind of weird you just kind of have to bounce back and forth click verify again verify verify now don't get discouraged if it's not working if it says verified here you've done it correctly you just need to click it a few times and there you go just play around with it and you should be able to get it to do what you want thanks so much for watching if you're interested in more in-depth tutorials like this make sure to check out agency dominance my flagship course for helping you grow your high-level agency link below in the description see you soon